Hello friends, it's Cindy Brumbaugh from CindyLeeBeeDesigns.com, independent stamping up demonstrator. Today's card is a simple fun fold using those adorable little party puffins. They're in the Stampin' Up! annual catalog right now. Today is December 2nd, 2021, and we got to keep our head wrapped around what date it is. It's just this ongoing, I never know what day it is or even what year it is anymore. <laughs> so we're going to use these cute little party puffins. There's three little guys in here and they're so adorable. So I was able to use all three of them on this card on this, these three different panels here and just a cute little, um, card that you can make from all of us um, to someone who makes other, there's so many cute little sentiments in here and I love this, I wanted to show this to you. So here we go, we have my little pieces that I'm gonna be using here. On this paper here, you can get this in the annual catalog as a host gift. It's an $18 host gift, but if you make a $150 workshop order, which is very easy to do, I know, um, you can get this, uh, cause a couple more dollars there. It's got beautiful patterns of different colors and then the opposite side is black and white. So it is probably one of the greatest host gifts I think they've, I've ever seen since in my career. 48 sheets, it's awesome. So we're gonna be using this one because it has so many beautiful festive colors for birthday. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make this card base. It's so simple to do. Now we're gonna start with an eight and a half by 11 and we are not going to get two cards out of this eight and a half by 11 like we normally do because we have to cut up on the eight and a half inch side, five and a quarter, because we need 10 and three quarters. So what we're gonna do is take that and we are going to take the eight and a half inch side of our paper and put it to five and a half. Now I've had a few inquiries about this gold tape up here. Now this gold tape is called Win Tape, W-I-N-T-A-P-E. I got it on Amazon. It reads from right to left. And I kind of needed this because I love our new trimmer, but one thing I'm missing from our old trimmer is that ruler that was at the top. So even though I'm using the measurements down here, it just gives me that idea. Like I used to be doing this and I'd say, oh, yeah, I think I'm at five and a half. Well, now I know I'm at the five and a quarter or the five and a half or the four and three quarters, wherever I am. So you get five of those for like $7.99. So get some, share them with your friends, use them. Um, you could put them on the bottom of your desk tape, you know, so you always have a ruler out. But that's where I got it, Amazon Wind Tape. So we're going to put this eight and a half inch side at five and a half. And we're just going to cut down using our dark scoring blade on our trimmer. Okay, now this isn't gonna go to waste because we're gonna be cutting out our scalloped oval that's on the front of the card. So, and then you can get a lot of them out of that. So the next thing we're gonna do is turn our 11 inch side now up to the top of here. And we only want to uh, cut off a small portion, three quarters, and that's what I love about this trimmer. Um, I love my guillotine trimmer, but I can't trim on that, that little tiny portion. So I can easily go over to a quarter. Oh my gosh, look at how much um, guck I got in my trimmer. So whenever I'm getting a ragged edge or something, I just kind of use a toothbrush to pull that out. And then if I see like I have a little adhesive stuck in there, I can just do just get that out with my paper trim. But it's amazing because sometimes you think your blade is dull, but it's actually just the fact that, and I'll see, I'm pulling this down here. And if you see how I'm getting all of that, see how much of that paper fuzz gets stuck in that groove? And another thing I'll do, now, ooh, I got a whole bunch there, um, is I'll take a piece of cardstock too sometimes, and I'll just put my cardstock in there and just keep, now look at all of that that's coming out up there. Oh gosh, little house cleaning there. See all of that little bits of the fibers from the cardstock get caught in there. And that actually can make your um, cutting dull. So just keep a toothbrush, a little poker, and a piece of cardstock, and you've got that cleaned up. Ooh, it's nice and clean now. So we're gonna take this right side on the right side of the groove, and we're going to go to three quarters of an inch. And we're, because we want our paper, dark cutting blade, 
We want our paper to be 10 and three quarters. Now, of course, you're gonna use that little scrap, right? Yes, okay. Now, the next thing we're gonna do is use our scoring blade. Another thing you might notice is this little piece of white strip here, I'm using all my scraps. I adhere that to the inside of my clear cutting so that I can actually see the letters. Um, I mean, the numbers <laughs> to see the, all the increments there. So whenever I'm doing a fancy cut, like I'm gonna do in a moment, I have this white here to really show through there. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to take that 10 and three quarters and keep it up against the upper corner, uh, upper guide here on our trimmer. And we're gonna wanna score at four and a quarter because that's how wide our card base is. So we're going to be sure not to use the dark blade, keep that up there and we're going to score four and a quarter. And then we're gonna to go to seven and a half, seven and a half. There we go, seven and a half. And we're going to make another score line. That ends up making these two portions the equal measurement. So now we're going, oh, we're not done with this trusty paper trimmer. The next thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to cut out this little portion really quickly and easily. So now this is gonna be our back portion. So we're gonna to wanna to cut, this is our four and a quarter. We wanna cut one inch down the whole way across. So what we could do is we could actually, let's do the first long cut first. So remember to have both of those equal portions here up at the top. So your four and a quarter is on the bottom towards you, and then you have these two sections. Now you're gonna go one quarter, one inch in. So you can either do it on either side, which you can do it from either side. I'm gonna go ahead and do it on this side, but if you do it on the other side, you have a one inch measure on that side. So we are going to go one inch down to this score line here, okay? That score line is actually at six and a half, okay? So if you're doing it this way, you're at one inch because you want one inch of a cut. And then you wanna go down to this score line and this is actually six and a half inches, okay? So we're going to, if we want to, we could cut either way, down or up, but I'm gonna go ahead and go down. So keeping that in place and holding that in place, I'm gonna drop my clear guide. I'm going to go down to six and a half. Go down to six and a half. And there's little, little tiny tick marks cut into your trim, trimming blade. And you just bring that and measure it right to that score line. Okay, and I'm right to the score line. Now I just wanna cut on the score line. So that's easy enough, cause I just put that right into the groove. And then I know I'm going one inch, so I can literally put this little guide here at one inch and go up. And this piece comes right out. So there we go, put our trimmer aside here. And so now we know this is going to be, now another little um, tool I use a lot is these uh, sanding blocks. And that just gets any little bit of um, fuzz off of your paper. I think they're called nail sanding blocks for fingernails. I got a bunch of those too. So we're going to fold over on the score line and then fold over on the score line. And if you did it right, if you've done it correctly, they're going to match up. But if you did them incorrectly, as in my first video uh, that I had to redo, you'll find out that they're not <laughs> scored right. I had went to seven and a quarter. Oh well. So there we go. Isn't that cute? And then you have one inch border on each side and you can decorate it any way you want. So here we're gonna use the puffins, okay? So on the front of the card, I put this designer series paper. And as I said, this measures, I think three and a quarter. So that would mean our designer series is three by four and a quarter. So we've got three by four and a quarter. Three wide by four and a quarter. Okay, so we are going to put our designer series paper on the front. 
I can just easily use my Tombow multi-purpose glue for this little job here. And we're just gonna get a nice 1 8 inch border the whole way around that front part of our card. There we go. And that is kind of the, you know, pop of color there on the front of the card. Now our Puffin, I already stamped him, but I'm gonna show you um, using my Stamparatus why I actually stamped him first. Okay, so we're going to put some glue on the back of our Puffin, and I use the layering circles for that with the scallop. Okay, um, I actually, just to let you know, the measurements are always underneath the YouTube description. Also, if you look at the description, it says visit my blog here, press that link. It takes you over to Cindy Lee B Designs. You can see more photos of the card and information. I also have my online store there that you could, if you need a product or something, and you can go right to it. Now, this is um, one of the circles. It looks to be about um, two and five eighths about two and five eighths circle, and then the scallop that is really tight around it. Okay, so we're gonna put that little puffin on this scallop. And I thought it popped off really nice off of the Hippo and Friends dies, but I did pop him up. Where are those dimensionals? Ah, they're right there. So I'm gonna pop that off there. Now you see I just, I'm feeling pretty confident, aren't I? Because I just did not color him yet, but we might as well just do that. So let's just see our little puffin is gonna have some pumpkin pie little feet. How adorable, super cute. Okay, and his little beak is pumpkin pie as well. And then I use the dark smoky slate because the pictures that I was looking at online showed kind of a, I would have actually just colored it all orange, not even thinking, but it's a really beautiful creature. God is, oh man, could you just imagine him up there going, I think I'm gonna do this on this bird. I'm gonna do this on this animal, amazing. So I went ahead and put some, pulled out, this is crushed curry, but our dark daffodil delight fits in. I'm going to use my fine tip because of this little here. I'm going to color in his little pom-pom on his hat and then I decided to do his hat green and poppy parade. So I used my granny apple green and I just colored in the hat. There we go. Colored in his hat with the granny apple green that's in the designer series paper and then used my Poppy Parade to do some little polka dots on his hat. And little Mr. Puffin is ready to go on, the t on this Hippo and Friends dies. And we're just gonna pop off our dimensionals and just pop that right onto the middle of that cool die. There we go. And that's gonna be going on the front of our card, okay? We're gonna put that on in just a moment. Now we're gonna look here at the middle portion here. Okay, so I'm trying to think of maybe putting some little thought bubbles here to go up to that because it's make a wish and wouldn't you think a puffin would be wishing for a little fish? So of course I um, made that. I used some flirty flamingo here and I did the puff in the same way. So this little guy. Now one thing you'll notice about solid stamps, sometimes they need to be stamped twice. So that's why I use my Stamparatus. And wait till you see how I set this up here. Okay, so I got trusty Stamparatus here. And it is used every which way using one acrylic plate. Now how did I know how to do those? The same way you probably will, a bunch of trial and error. <laughs> now, normally I would use copy paper, but I thought I was just not gonna do that, but I would stick copy paper in here and then I'm not wasting my cardstock. But every time I went to do it, I was just, oh no, this would be better. Oh no, I want it closer here. So yes, that's what happens in the back, back scenes of stamping, right? Okay, so what we're gonna do here is we're going to put that middle portion in here and we're gonna put the little puffin 
So he was going this way. Okay, so he's going down this way. Now, the reason why I went ahead and used my Stamparatus is because when I'm using black ink, I want the black to really be solid black. So I find if I stamp it a couple different times, it will <clears throat> become, <clears throat> excuse me, much blacker. So what we're gonna do is, now think of it this way, here's your fish and here's your puffin down in the bottom right, but it's okay to turn my my Stamparatus the opposite way just because it's easier for me to maneuver here. So I'm gonna take my Memento Black and I'm going to ink up that puffin and the fish. Okay, little fish and my puffin. I don't know what it is about the um, solid stamps, but you'll notice when you're using stamp positioning tools it really helps to have to use um, to be able to stamp it more than one time. So we're getting that puff in there and we're getting that fish, giving it some pressure. Um, using the Stamparatus, we don't need that black foam mat, which actually we don't have anymore. We just have that really nice grid one. Now you'll notice, see, it's not totally covered. This little fish is almost covered, but so I'm not gonna mind covering it. But if the fish turns out fine, only stamp the puffin. But we're gonna give that puffin, and you know, sometimes I, I'm gonna go ahead and do the fish one time too. Okay, so we're gonna do it one more time, and probably a third time. It just really is my luck with doing the um, solid stamps. And then I make sure that I hold pressure and let it sink into the paper, okay? Mr. Puffin is getting darker, but you know what? I thought he could get a little more dark here. So even, and my fish is turning out nicely too. Okay, so now we're gonna make sure that's into the corner, but you certainly don't have to have it into the corner. You could put some temporary tape to hold it in place anywhere on your Stamparatus. Okay, Mr. Puffin, are you sufficiently dark? Yes, and see how cute that is. Now I'm gonna set this aside just a second here while we work on something else, just to give it a little bit of dry time. Okay, so the next thing is on this card, we have, we had this Puffin we did, and I put this one on the top here, and then um, let's just show you how I did that. I just had a piece of like three and a half inch. Oh, let me make sure, get out my chamois here. Make sure that this is wiped off just because we're playing with a lot of different papers. Okay, so I stuck a piece, making it easy on myself. I love how versatile this is. I put a piece of three and a half inch um, piece of, white cardstock and then I just inked him up and closed it down. It was this stamp and then it got a nice solid image too. And now, but this time we're gonna be doing the puffin that's down where the cake is, okay? So I put the puffin in the cake and like I said, the reason why I got this the way I wanted it, like the first time I did it, he was over, but I wanted him a little closer, so I did it a second time. So just play around with it, but use copy paper instead of good basic white. Okay, so I've got all these things going on. All right, we need our four inch, four inch by five and a quarter. And remember, all the measurements are over on my blog and underneath the YouTube description. So don't worry about that. And if you're, for your viewing pleasure, someday I might figure out how to put them on the video. But until then, you might just have to do a little homework there. <laughs> but they are underneath the description, so how far is that? You can always um, like cut your pieces and then watch the video, and as I'm doing the video, some people like to actually work right along with me, so if you cut all your pieces, then you're ready to work right along with me. Okay, so um, also remember, with YouTube videos, you can pause. I mean, when I'm watching other videos by um, card makers, I just stop it and pause, or I rewind. Remember, you can do that if someone's going too fast for you. Okay, so this is our four by five and a quarter that's that inside part, okay? So I wanna get Mr. Puffin dark, 
and the cake, okay? So what I'm gonna do is do the same thing I did before, probably stamp it three times, okay? And that's tightly in the corner, and I'm going to stamp. And you know that this is super easy to make multiples out of because you leave these guys here, whip out 10 of these, and you have a great card anytime you need one. This could easily be made into a gift card holder too because you could maybe on this portion or even, yeah, somehow you could put a gift card in there. I gotta work on that, huh? Okay, so push that down. And like I said, he's not as dark as I want him to be. Ooh, and I might have not pressed enough on that side too, but don't move it. Um, I can fix that at the end. Okay, so let's get this stamped again. And make sure it's in the same place. Make sure I'm getting this corner. I might have it a little tight in there because I stuck that in after the fact. Um, because I had been just doing the puffin and coming back and stamping the cake. So if I didn't, if I'm a little tight there, I'll just fix it with my Stampin' Right marker. Okay. There we go. Make sure my cake is done. Ha ha ha, little play on words there. Okay, yeah, I do have this over a little bit, but I can't move it now because it's gonna mess up Mr. Puffin here. Okay, so let's do one, two, three. Usually th three is the magic number with my black. It just seems to be the way. Okay. And then down one more time. You know, your black might actually, you know, work fine. Plus this is a brand new stamp, so it's really not conditioned yet. So by the time I have a class or something, it's well conditioned. Okay. Make sure I'm getting that bottom. I noticed I missed that. Okay, there we go. Now, like I said, I'm missing a little bit here. I think the next time I will move the cake over a little bit, but as I was doing this, oh, you know what? I think his head could use a little bit of black. And I see a little on my, my. you can see a tiny bit of black on here. I might not have pressed well enough. So let's just do a little bit more and make sure I got his head. Okay, and see that's the nice thing about the Stamparatus because you can, not only does it keep you from getting edges and things, it just can, it allows you to fill in a little piece, piece that's missed. Okay, so we are going to just do a little bit of cosmetic surgery here on our cake. We're just gonna bring over and finish off this line and finish off the side. And then I see that I missed a little bit of this candle. Okay, so we are good. We're gonna sit, oh gosh, look at that. Oh, darn, a little bit of ink there. Okay, another thing I did on this card is I wanted my candles to go in a, to fit this card. Do you ever just like, oh, I wish this um, fit this exact portion. I cut mine, but I'm going to stamp them first. And then I'll show you how I cut it so you really don't damage your uh, stamp. So I wanted these to, I wanted them to be scattered a little bit different than they are on the stamp. Like they're scattered this way, but I wanted them to be this part. I wanted it to fit my card, okay? And that they would go on the corner here. So we're going to ink up. Oh, I can't believe I got a smudge there, but you know what? I am not going to worry. So I took this the whole way. Um, I'm going to actually use my mat here in case I mess up. I'm keeping those candles very close to the edge. I'm going to hold them down to make sure I get a nice imprint of the ink. Okay, so I've got my three candles there. Now let me show you how I cut these and move them around. Now they come like this on the stamp set. So you'll notice 
They fit right back together. However, you might be tempted and you say, oh, you know what, I'm gonna cut that right here. Oh, you know what, I'm gonna cut this edge off. Oh, I'm gonna clean up this edge. Don't do that. Do straight cut, straight cut. And if you have to do like another straight, like say I wanted to make these three and I wanted, I would go straight cut. And then when you ever have to put this back together, I do this a lot with my words when I want my words to maybe sit on top of each other instead of I want to have them like happy birthday instead of happy birthday like on like if I wanted this to say happy and put the birthday underneath it. So what I do is I just make sure I cut a nice straight curve, a nice straight cut with no curves because you can put that right back together again and it will work just the way it did. And remember, you can do that because these are your stamps and you're the boss. Okay, so there we go. We have all of this cut and stamped, except for you know this little thing is making me mad. So what would you do if that was making you mad? I would say I could, you will have to go to my blog, cindyleebdesigns.com and look up Stampin' Up! Party Puffins and figure out how I fix that, okay? So I'm very good at fixing mistakes because I make a lot. Okay, the other thing we're missing is the happy birthday. So we're just gonna do happy birthday using our memento ink again and just make sure I get now you could actually put this on the stamparatus too but I had pretty good luck with getting a good stamp with this here so we're just going to put that up at the top within that one inch space just hold it for a couple seconds just make sure the ink I think sometimes we just do it really fast because we're afraid, but if you hold it there, you get good ink coverage. And then if you have any um, spaces, like you'll see this is a little dark, I just go back in, you know, and like I said, I just opened the stamp set, so I haven't played around with it as much. And the more you use your stamps, the more conditioned they are and the better they stamp. So we need to make sure we're using them. So if I see like that I have a little bit of like splotchies there, I just come back in and I just fix them with my stamp and write markers. These markers are different from our blends. These markers are great for little fix-ups whenever you make a mistake or you need to fill something in. They come in every single color that we own, what we own, that we produce at Stamping Up, but they're the stamp and write markers, and you can get the whole big container of every color at one time, or you can just get the color families, and so it's good to have these on hand. I don't use them so much for coloring because they get like a streak, just like if you're using a regular marker, and but our blends give that alcohol blend, no streak, and so you can't... Um, really fill in, like I couldn't take a blend and fill in a line that was not made perfectly. You wanna use stamp and write markers. Also, we can use these markers, the brush tip side, and we can add, oh, that's not the brush tip because this little line shows you that's the fine line. You can also make happy black. You could do this. And you can make this color something, a different color. Boy, did that actually stamp nicely. I want to see that marker. And if I only wanted to do happy, you've got happy that way, okay? And I could do this birthday. I could have did it like in uh, Poppy Parade. So these markers using the brush side are awesome to use on. Do not use your blends on your red rubber or your photopolymer because they will not stamp that way. They will stain your photopolymers and they're just not meant to be used that way. So do not. Okay, so we're gonna fix this sometime after the video, but let's just take a look at the colors I used on here. Of course, I could sit here and color in front of you, but I'm just gonna show you. I did pumpkin pie for the little fish here. And like I said, I'm going to figure out how to maybe do a little bubble going up there to show that he's thinking of his wishes to get that fish. And so on him, oh, look here. This little puffin doesn't have any color in his little feet. Oh, golly. I'm sorry, little guy. You're probably just feeling so inadequate there without the right pair of feet. Okay. So there we go. And then on this little puffin, same thing. I used pumpkin pie for his feet. And then I used the basic gray in his beak and the pumpkin pie for the 
point of the beak. And then on my cake, I used the smoky slate because I pulled that down to here in the little platter. And the cake platter, I just left white icing with flirty flamingo, like in the bow here, pulled out of the color there. And then I used the daffodil for the candles and up here on my candles I also use the flames there this candles pumpkin pie granny apple green and I threw in some pool party so pool party is actually in here I could have actually done flirty flamingo and pool party maybe I'll do that on this uh, cake here and so I pulled that pool party out of there I love pulling colors out of my designer series paper it takes all my thinking out of it I try to you know pull all the colors like the poppy parade the granny apple green the, there's pumpkin in here too crushed curry works really well with our dark daffodil. So is this the cutest little fun fold? And how easy was it to do? I mean, we literally just took a 10 and three quarters by five and a half. We cut it down to, well, we used an eight and a half by 11, but we cut it down to 10 and three quarters and then made this five and a half. And all we did was put our card, which was originally, you know, we put that 11 inch side up there and we scored at four and a quarter and at seven and a half. And then that gave us these two portions of three and a quarter to play around with. And that's so easy to do. So I appreciate you stopping by to see this cute little puffin or the cute little three puffins. So if you have any questions, you can always email me at cindyleeb at gmail.com. You can call or text me 724 323 2296. Hey, if you make this fun fold and you use other stamps that you have, you know, I love getting happy mail and happy text with pictures and photos. So have fun, you know, play around with your stamps. You can cut them if you need to, to give a different orientation to your stamps. Just make sure you do it on a straight cut and you can make these fun little guys. Don't forget too, that your Stamparatus is not only a friend for making you know, multiples out, it also helps you stamp your solid images one or two times to get a really deep, especially with black. So I am so thankful for this Stamparatus. So if you have any questions, um, just contact me. Thanks for buzzing by, friends.